was, it was just devastating. I hadn't watched television the night before, so I had no idea that anything was happening. I had to stop him and tell him, what in the world are you talking about? And he said, Greensburg is gone. glued to the TV and as it came closer and closer to Greensburg and they talked about the probability of the storm hitting this town and the storm chasers talking about the enormous size of the tornado itself, uh, I really started to become not only intrigued but concerned. I was trying to figure out what aspect of this I needed to, to take care of first. Um, Mark Anderson is the editor of the Kiowa County Signal and he went over to Greensburg. So I was trying to figure out what I could do to fill in some more of the parts of the story. At uh, 7.30 Saturday morning, uh, my reporter Gal Rose called and he started listing all of the things that he'd done and all the things that he'd been covering. And I hadn't watched television the night before, so I had no idea that anything was happening. I had to stop him and tell him, what in the world are you talking about? I stayed up all night Saturday well, starting Friday night, all day, all night Saturday, and was gathering information. I called my editor, Conrad, on Saturday morning to fill him in on where we were and what I was doing and trying to find out what, what's the next step, where do we need to go, what do, how do we organize. Luckily, we had uh, Mark Anderson over there at the Signal. Uh, and uh, he's been our editor there for some time. The editor of the paper at Pratt started calling me and wanting to talk about coverage, and I couldn't even think about it in those terms at that time. I was still reacting to it. Sunday, uh, I had to force myself to start to do it. As the weeks progressed, I've been over here every day for anywhere from five to nine hours. It's gotten, I won't say easier, but more manageable. There was an awful lot of work, an awful lot of information that had to be gathered, pictures had to be gathered, staff had to get over there and get pictures and stories from the people there. Um, getting all this together was a, uh, a very unique situation because we hadn't had, we never had anything like this in this area, ever. I, I think we missed out on the, the really human story right away. And, uh, of course, when, when these folks are your neighbors and their friends and, the, and they're kind of shell-shocked, you, you don't know whether to approach them or, or to, to, to go ahead and, and find out whether they want to talk. Some of them do. I went to the hospital here in Pratt and talked with the people there that were taking care of the injured and uh, found out about how they were triaging patients. I went over to the shelter in Havlin and spoke with uh, some of the people that were over there. And it was pretty hard to walk in there and see your friends that you've known for a long time. Um, I guess just the fact that this was a second home to me. I know a lot more people here than I do in the town where I live. And, and knowing them as well as I do, as I've gotten to know them over the last three years, it's just really been difficult to look at this objectively talking with my publisher after he came back from seeing Greensburg for the first time and, and uh, saying you, you don't realize from pictures what it what it really is uh, you really have to smell it uh, and, and they were smelling gas leaks from you know busted mains they were smelling anhydrous ammonia uh, and they were hearing uh, odd sounds, beepings uh, from whatever battery, battery powered thing was in the rubble uh, trying to get someone's attention, whether it might have been an alarm clock or uh, an abandoned cell phone or anything. And that combined with the, with the kind of eerie quiet that there was right after uh, uh, the storm. And, and uh, probably that will, will stick out for a long time.